What's happening? This is Ever Don, and welcome to the first episode of the Beats for Breakfast podcast. Today, I just want to give you guys a short video and just thanking you. Thank you so much for being patient with me and just waiting for me to go ahead and give you guys new content on this channel. Um, I know it's been a while since I uploaded, and I will still be doing the gaming remixes, but we'll be doing more on this channel starting with this podcast. This podcast will feature topics with gaming mostly music and business oriented topics so because it's been so long you guys are in for a treat you'll have an episode today at 9 a.m eastern standard time tomorrow and sunday 9 a.m eastern standard time and then from there every episode will be friday morning 9 a.m eastern standard time so i hope you enjoy this podcast hope you enjoy seeing different sides of people that you probably know and able to meet some new people that you probably wouldn't have gotten a chance to hear from. So thank you guys for being patient with me and hope you enjoy the show. Thank you. What's happening, people? Welcome to another episode of the Beats for Breakfast podcast. I'm your host, Avedon Smith, and I am joined by my dude, David Drayton. Yo, David, man, tell him about yourself, man. How you been, bro? Man, what's going on, Everdon, man? I pre appreciate you having me on. I'm happy to be here. Uh, man, my name is David Drayton, and uh, I do a little bit of everything, but mainly, I guess what you'll know me for after this episode is that I'm a reseller. So, uh, Pro but other than that, man, I'm doing good. A reseller with a, with a huge entrepreneurial mindset. But we're, we're going to dip into that a little bit into this episode. But for the people who are wondering, who is David Drayton? Like, tell the folks really about yourselves, things about, you know, reselling and other things that you may want to share. Ah, oh, man, who is David Drayton? Uh, well, um, man, let's see here. I can go all the way back to to my birth year. But I mean, you know, I'm 28 years old. I'm from uh, Conway, Arkansas, basically central Arkansas, down here in the Mid-South. And uh, man, I have a career in uh, retail sales, um, retail sales analyst for a pretty big company. I know they're probably watching, so, you know, kind of kind of watching my, what I say and everything about them, but a uh, good company. And on the side, I have uh, kind of a, a side hustle reselling. Uh, man, it started off video games, but it's moved into any and everything that I can flip and make money off of. Anything that I know is kind of like something that's in high demand that I can make a profit off of. That's kind of what I'm moving into. Nice. But, uh, yeah, 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 for sure, for sure. What are some of your favorite things to sell, man? Outside like the video game stuff. Um, hmm. I would say uh, like concert merch, especially merch from like like rappers that are really really hot right now. Whether it's Kanye, whether it's Travis Scott, <laughs> man, like that stuff when you got it the, drops, you it got sells out. So that's something that's an easy hot flip for me. You got some of the stuff from um the baby. No, actually, I don't. And it's crazy because I wasn't the biggest Baby fan until maybe his last album, the Baby on Baby album. And I was like, okay, I like this dude. I really I really became more of a fan of his because of his music videos before his music. I was like, this dude is new, but his videos kind of give me a, a vibe of old, like, you know, early, old, early 2000 stuff. So, mm -hmm. man, I didn't even jump on any of his merch, really. I should have, but... He, he, he's he's one of the hottest. He's one he's one of the hottest now. You know, North Carolina, they got, you know, you got Knife Wonder down there, you got Rapsy mm -hmm. down there. Um I think Heather Victoria's down there too. So you got a whole you got the whole JAMA label down there. So he's in good company when it comes to talent. So that's what's good though. That's what's oh, good. Yeah. But um I wanna ask you just from a reseller perspective because I, I know you get it. I know you probably get it. I know you heard it. People talk about scalping and all and all this and all this stuff. I know. I know. I get it. Yeah. But yeah. if you was at the time, you would be the guy to purchase about let's say ten NES classics or more, and you would flip these things for profit. Back when it was high, you would flip these things for profits. Can you give people a professional? explanation on why reselling is actually substantial value to the market that is a very good question and as crazy as i sound trying to defend by intent uh, <laughs> or, or, or like you know or you know getting access to that many because when those things drop they were so limited you yeah, maybe each retailer might have got one or two in you know mm -hmm. i think originally they didn't even want to print that many it was just like a little novelty item for them so um but just trying to, how does it provide value? Well, you can look at it like this. For me, for me, it's like, 
man, it's, I guess I want to have to kind of explain how I even got into reselling because I, you By know, this is rather new. I just started this in May. So it's not something I've been doing my whole life. What? Kind of, no, 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 no. <laughs> I mean, maybe shoes back in the day. Like the shoe market has been a reseller's market. It's, of course. It's, that culture is, we we pretty much understand that's a reseller's culture. Anything, Definitely. You know, there's brick and mortar stores based solely off of resale in New York. And it's, it's big in hip hop, but yeah. video games is a whole nother thing, you know? So, but um, man, how to provide value. All I can say is there is a demand for things that are limited, no matter what no matter what there is a demand for things that are limited so if they print let's say they make a million of these nes classes when they drop and 10 million people want them and i happen to get one or 10 you know or however i get them there's somebody with the money that is willing to pay me for that there's somebody who's not willing and then there's somebody who's willing and they are they're like yo who who has it who has it for sale on the market and who's willing to put it up for a price that i'm willing to press go on so to that one customer that was value because they're willing to pay because for whatever reason they weren't able to get it whether it was amazon or whether their local stores don't have it or maybe they're in a rural place with no big retailers but they want this thing for their collection they just want to have it if they got the bread and i got the product we meet together it's a perfect match you know you see and right there what you shared it's like i have some experience doing um business to business um um, sales marketing for a business like I had to um, sell cable I'm not gonna mention what companies and everything for the sake of the businesses but I had to sell cable and and internet cable and internet and I would say okay. just from that it's one of the best things you 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 know from doing sales is you don't focus on the people who don't want your product you focus on the people mm -hmm. that do want your product it's a yep. mindset shift so what you're saying is a testament to just basic sales basic sales is you focus on who wants to buy and as you said there is always somebody who wants to um, buy since may since you started you've been sharing your profits on like how much you've been making your goals online right yeah yeah um for it's crazy because i like I said, I kind of tripped into all this and I'm still like, I've, I've for me right now, like right now, uh, October, what, 2nd, 2019, um, man, it, I've, it's, it's been an awareness journey for me realizing, okay, where I am now, mentally, emotionally, and awareness wise, isn't where I was when I first started in May. I promise you that. <laughs> so mm -hmm. uh, in five months, I managed to, managed to do uh, over $10,000, actually, as of September, I, in the September of the tail end, I managed to gross ten thousand dollars. So for, for me, for me, that was like wow, okay. But let's say May, the May, like back in May when I started, I would have never thought this. That wasn't even my goal. That wasn't even my intention. Um, I guess I, to give you a little bit of background on why you know how I even got to this point, um, I graduated high school in two thousand and nine, right? Mm -hmm. And when I went to high school, I sold my Wii. I'm a big Nintendo fan. I'm not a fanboy and like that, but I'm a big Nintendo fan. So I had a Wii during that generation. After Smash Brawl, I was done with the Wii. I'm gonna be real with you. After that game, I, bro, I, I, I feel you, oh, rightfully yeah. so, okay. rightfully so. So in 09, I decided to stop gaming. I went off to school, I went off to college. And for that, for that time during my school time, I didn't game, I didn't touch games, I didn't have any consoles, I didn't have anything. I, I left the gaming culture in 2009, really early 2009, because I graduated early and then I went in straight into school. So um, for me, I took like a, an eight year hiatus from gaming. So I didn't go, I didn't get a Wii U. I remember, I remember a coworker of mine posted when it came out and I saw the box, I saw the box. I think it was like, a, I don't know if it was a red box or white box or whatever. Mm -hmm. I looked at it and said, no, that's not for me. I, I'm not touching that. I had a Wii, I hated it. That looks like the Wii 2.0. No, I don't, I don't want anything to do with that system. So I wasn't even interested in the gaming until like 2015. I have a, like, at that time I had like a maybe five year, he was five, I had a nephew who was five years old. And at that time, Nintendo, they only pretty much marketed on childhood, ne like children's networks, right? It's so like Nickelodeon, yeah. Disney. So I'd be with him and he'd be watching these children's shows and I see a pr promo for Smash. I love Smash. And I was like, yo, okay, they got this thing called the 3DS. I didn't know what it was. That's how out of the loop of gaming I was. And they had a Wii. I was actually gonna buy a Wii U um, just for Smash. So I said, well, let me go That's find dedication. out what is, what's happening. So 2015, I went to YouTube 
And this is how out of the loop I am on YouTube. I didn't know what a gaming YouTuber was in 2015. I didn't know what streaming was. Like I was, YouTube for me was just the place I went for how-to videos, how to do something. That's like, how it was for me, how to, how to tie a tie. Yeah, how yeah, to tie like, <laughs> That's all I use it for. So, like, I didn't yeah. know what a YouTuber was. I didn't know what this culture was. So in 2015, that's when the NX rumors were going around. So yeah. whenever that happened, I guess when Satura Wada put out that that um, that little statement about they have another console in development, mm -hmm. I was like, oh, I'm not buying a Wii U. I'm not, I'm gonna I'm wait to see what this thing is because there was so much anticipation. And I found three accounts during that time. I think it was uh, Rich over at Review Tech USA. I found Etika, World Network, and then I found Obi. <laughs> Yo, those are the same three people I found in that same time period. That's great, right? And yeah. I think I, I might have been, shout out to Obi, I might have been his right at 2,000 subscribers. So back then, so right when he was really launching his channel and he was posting all the NX rumors, Etika was, and the Etika was the first streamer I ever seen. He was streaming NX yo, new Edi rumors. Yo, Edi so me, Etika did yeah. a lot. Etika did a yeah. lot. Rest in peace, man. That, that man, man did a lot. Etika, man. man. R.I.P. R.I.P. <laughs> Etika, man. He was, yeah. he definitely got me hyped about Nintendo again, re- really re-energizing me from my childhood yeah so when the NX, when the when the switch finally was revealed in late 2016 i was like yo when that that thing right there that is my system that thing is built for me whoever designed that thing they built it for somebody who because for my job i travel a lot i'm in hotels all the time so i don't have time to sit in front of a tv like i did when i was a preteen when i was a kid so i said this thing is perfect i was ready to get it launch weekend i got it at toys r us right they sold out on friday they restocked on sunday i was first in line to get it at our local toys r us that was my I mean, r.i.p to toys r us that was my only and first purchase ever at that store so um when i've got that game i mean i got the switch i got zelda i got a bunch of games let me tell you what i did i od'd on buying stuff you know what i'm yeah. saying the, the, the 12 year old in me was like yo we got money now let's go buy every game let's go buy everything like i'm buying every collector's edition every stuff i don't really plan on playing and i wasn't planning to resell this stuff i had become a collector right mm. so for the first time in my life i've never been a collector because i was a kid i didn't have the, the money to really collect like that you know and as a kid looking back man i was trading a bunch of my games to get more games and now i'm finding myself buying back my old gamecube games at like 10 times the price i was like dang it <laughs> so um but i you know long story short i amassed a huge collection in this closet that i have the spare closet i wasn't using and too early this year like around this time i started reselling i said you know what what am i doing why do i have all of this stuff in my closet i'm not i don't have time to play all this stuff i don't have time to play this and this and this and, and at the time i didn't open any of my collector's editions they were just things that i that i bought off of impulse and I noticed in at the time on Twitter, Sorry I was in an that. echo chamber of collectors, right? People who had these huge, huge collector collections and shrines to Nintendo and all these generations. I'm like, yo, I got all of that on my way. Out of my internet, I got all that out of my system. I'm like, yo, what am I doing? Like the high came down for me. So I remember what I did. The first item I listed, I had the Bayonetta 2 special edition, the one that's exclusive to um, the UK. Amazon UK had it. I imported it. They gave me two for the price of one, which was dope. What? Yeah, it was crazy. They sent me two and it's like, oh, just keep it. You know, it's our bad. Just keep it. I said, yo, it's cool. I paid like $70 for that, like for the, the whole order. I scanned it with the eBay app and I seen, and I remember watching a Gary Vee interview. He was doing one on a uh, breakfast club. And he, I remember watching that. He was, dude, just get on the eBay app and just scan stuff and see what it'll resell for. And I, I said, I remember he said that. So I scanned I seen the listings and what they were going for. I'm like 120, 130 people will buy this stuff. I listed it and within 48 hours it sold. I was like, I might, I may, I, I may have to start doing that myself, man. <laughs> <laughs> like, I, I, you, yeah. yo, I'm, I'm, I'm inspired to just start doing that myself. Get the eBay app, like, yo, let me scan this because that, you're, that's the man. Cause like you, you're right. It's like you have a lot of stuff in, in your house. It's like Gary Vee said his best. Like people are sitting on thousands of dollars in their house, and mm -hmm. you're not doing anything with that. So for me personally, I would want to, you know, I would want for myself to go ahead and do some of the, what you're doing in a way. But at the same time, I feel as though what you have done is so amazing because, like you said. You said something that was key. You're not the same person now that you was back then. Back then, you was like, you know what? 
I'll try this. And you just kind of tripped into something. There are so many people that cannot say they have grossed $10,000 of profit <laughs> off a side hustle. No, no, no. Now, it's, it, it's not profit. It's oh. not profit. Oh. I would say a good, like, 45% of that is actual profit. Oh, okay. You know what I'm saying? I thought it was so profit. Like, I thought it was profit. I was like, well, like, because when I when I started, I started selling off things that I already I already paid for. Like, you know true, what I'm saying? True, 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 true. I already true. paid for this stuff. So the money I get off of it. So I paid 70 for that, that uh, banner that wanted to. So the trade, the trade off, I got you. Yeah. So I got my 70, I paid back plus an additional 50, 60 off the, that was profit on that. Okay. So, and for me, I always keep my profit margins no more than at, at least 40%. That's just, that initially, I that's go good. That. Some, that's still sometimes good. Sometimes I go over a hundred. If I know it's something that's like, this is going to fly, I'm going a hundred, 150%. That's just, you know, I might start there in the high end. And then just you know, as it you know, as time goes down, I'll gradually lower that price until boom, someone's like, "Hey, that's the price that I want to pay for that." You know, just on eBay, you'll get people that'll watch your item, and they'll sit there and watch it, and you can actually look at the eBay app and say, "I got a hundred views on this item. There's ten people watching it, so you can lower the price by like five or ten dollars every week, and then somebody's gonna somebody's gonna attack it eventually." So. Uh, and eBay is really good about helping your products get sold. I don't know if you've ever been on the app, but when you view something on the app, you just view it. You don't do anything to it. You view it. Some kind of way they get your data and will start emailing you. Hey, that thing you view just dropped in price. Even if you're not a watcher, it'll be like, hey, that thing you, you view, that microphone or whatever, it just dropped in ten, It dropped $10. Do you want to buy it now? So I'm looking at my entire catalog, which right now I have over 145 listings. Sheesh. Uh, individual listings. Yeah. So, uh, I'm sure emails are going out to all these different people who have viewed my products. So any adjustments that I make in real time, they're sending out emails to help this stuff get sold because eBay, you know, it's a good partnership because they, they do take 10% of every sale, but all the value they give you, especially if you sign up for like the, the, the partnership where you, you pay a monthly fee, but they give you an entire back office. You can look at all of your sales, the trends, the performance, you can drop and uh, raise prices in real time. I mean, it's, it gives you so much it gives you so much more tools so you can get things done because they want you to sell because they make money off your sales. Exactly. Yeah. So, See. but yeah, man, that's, that's kind of where I'm at now. Um, and it wasn't, it wasn't hard getting into this because I was like, yo, I can make money off of this. So I started off selling off my collection and then my mind, my mindset changed into, okay, well, my collection dwindled down and dwindled down. The stuff that the stuff that sold real fast and some of the stuff was like it sat for a little while but then after a while it start picking up as i lowered the price a little bit um <laughs> this is gonna be a crazy story right so go ahead go for it it was a uh, it was an my mindset changed to actively go out and find stuff right the same energy i use to be a consumer and consume 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 i want that limited i want that collectors i want that re whatever fancy word they use for a port they poured over but it got a box with some stickers and a steel case and whatever fancy word they use so i'm going to yes i'm going to consume it by buying it but with the only with the intention to resell it mm. so so you know what i'm saying so i'm only attacking this product to resell it i'm not attacking it to have it on a shelf or to consume it or to play it and when i when that mindset changed my whole outlook on Twitter changed. My whole outlook on the, the, the market, the culture changed. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm you, in this You thing. became a producer more than a consumer at that point. You became oh. some, you became somebody who's going to provide value. Because then again, and for those of you who didn't catch the answer to the question on how this provides substantial value to the market, it's because your closet is valuable. That's why. You don't... You underestimate what you have in your closet that someone else may have value for. If somebody needs something, if you go, let's just say, um, you know what, I'm gonna use something kind of old school that we could probably kind of see eye to eye on. If you have the Power Ranger Pyramid uh, Megazoid in perfect okay. condition, you could resell that for a profit for someone who really wants to buy that and keep that in perfect condition let's just say for people who are still in the pokemon cards you have the first edition on um, charizard cards mint condition perfect condition you can resell those there are many things that you can resell so reselling is not a case of what so just someone going to a store and buying things that you want and you can't get it especially yeah. if you didn't have any type of you didn't have any type of 
um, let's just say desire to go ahead and buy that product in the first place. You're just complaining at the thought of someone buying four or five of them. It's it's nonsense to me at the end of the day. Well, here here's a story that you and uh, like I said, like okay, I kind of I, I kind of get you guys in the mindset of kind of where I was. So like I said, I found YouTube and then I found those three original channels, and then from there I caught like Spawnway Media. I caught him and Aaron and uh, Evan on the come up when they were they were young in the channel. And then from there, I think I found Player Essence, OJ. I think I found him when he was putting in Excel. So anybody who was really putting out NX content at the time, I was subscribing to, to get me ready for to have a switch, right? Mm -hmm. So fast forward to kind of knowing, you know, you and OJ and everything like that, you guys really kind of support what I do. Um, I went to Walmart and, and this is when I was posting a lot about supply and demand. And again, I wasn't really trying to educate people. I was really, for me, I was trying to document something. I was trying to have some form of documentation. Mm. So Twitter is something I use for that. So I remember I went to Walmart and here's what happened. This company put out a 5,000 print physical run of a game, exclusive to the US, exclusive to Walmart, right? So me being in these collecting echo chambers, I know the demand for this already, right? I'm, I'm, of course. You know, I, yeah, I, I know the demand for this. So there's people globally who want this SKU but can't get it unless it gets imported to them by me, you know, so or someone like me. So I went to the store and I work in retail sales, so I, I, I deal with a lot of uh, SKUs, analytical data. So I just pulled the data for the SKU and I knew what stores it was in. And Walmart typically is only going to get a maximum of five SKUs per game, right? So in my area, I mean, in my in my city, in my like in a 50, 60 mile radius, there's maybe four or five, you know, Walmarts with a gaming section. So I, I went to the one locally to, to, in, in my hometown and I said, you know what, these there's a twenty dollar price point. I looked on eBay. People who had already started reselling them were reselling them for thirty dollars. Now, in my mind, I'm like, who buys a game for twenty dollars and resells them for thirty? And eBay is taking three dollars out of that thirty dollar sale so you're only going to profit seven and then paypal is taking another small percentage for the you know at the, on, on the back end yep for the, for the process and so you're not making much money but i said you know what let those resellers do what they do i'm gonna do me i go in and i buy like i think they had four i bought all four and then what i did i posted a video of me going and getting it, it was an easy video i was talking about just it was it was like a, maybe a 20 second clip supply and demand right mm -hmm. so i think you commented on it and I think OJ commented on it. <laughs> and you guys have some pretty nice followings, especially or some influence in the gaming market. So I'm just learning how Twitter works, really, because I'm I'm used to 2019. I'm, too, I'm used to 2009 Twitter when I was like a teenager in college. Right. I'm used to that Twitter. So being on Twitter now, that's a whole nother conversation on how it's it's so much more useful. Maybe by like by the way, if you guys don't know, I'm going to cut you off. Make sure you yeah, follow this man on D. His name is Pay D Dre on Twitter. <laughs> yeah. P A Y D D A A. Wait. P. Oh, go boy. See, I, I'm already messing up. Let me go go to Twitter. I'm sorry. P A Y D D R A Y. P A Y D D R A Y. I tried to do it off memory, and that didn't work out. Is this the is this the video that that I'm thinking about though? The video. The. It's it's it's, it's back in like late late may early june early june think, using, using a hotel room no 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 and that's that these are linked these stories are linked together oh right? so, sweat okay so whenever whenever i think oj posted he was he was like yo let's go that's what's up and i think you that brought a lot of eyeballs to that video because at that time i might have had maybe 10 twitter followers at that point right yeah mm -hmm. you know i wasn't trying to mass follows to me at that point my twitter account was just for documenting something on a small on a platform just to kind of build something up so when you guys commented on it some kind of way the video got more views i saw the views go up by like 50 and like another 60 and then somebody commented on the bottom and he was mad this dude was angry he's like man you a-hole you the reason why i can't get what i want is people like you and in the collecting community that I am, I wouldn't say I'm a part of as a member of their family. They probably, they probably wouldn't like somebody like me, but it's the internet. It's all free and it's all free content. Right. So, so I got yeah. eyes everywhere. He put this hashtag and in this hashtag that he attached to my video brought the entire community. It, 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 it basically what a hashtag does, it, put, it, po it posts your video yeah. in that echo chamber for that hashtag. This hashtag, under a, underused quality on Twitter about it. Underused um, asking on Twitter. Underused. 
he did that and the video jumped up another 100 or 200 or something like that mm. so one of the prominent co-leaders in this group of people of collectors primarily for the nintendo switch i think it's yeah 100 percent for the nintendo switch commented on the bottom and he was like yeah and he was real professional real professional because he's a leader so he was like you know what this is what this community fights against we don't like this and we combat it and it at you know hashtag so and so we don't like this yada yada he kept it short and sweet when he commented now he has a really big following he commented on it it brought even more of that same original energy from homeboy who was mad and then other people was coming on the bottom of it and was like you know just basically to keep it keep it pg basically just mad at me didn't like people like me didn't like scalpers worldwide but could focus it on my video and then some people didn't comment on the video some people just gave me the direct mention just direct just cussing me out sending me all type of weird saying i need to be violated like you know what i'm saying sexually violated and i'm over here like what the heck is happening right now all i did was post a video about supply versus demand yo a, you know what i'm saying <laughs> <laughs> yo come on dog bro it i was talking to my mom at the time about something and i'm scrolling through my timeline i'm looking at my mentions and i remember this paralyzing feeling that came over me i said this must be what it feels like when celebrities get bashed on a smaller scale for me but i said this must be, be when people come i remember that i remember that tweet too i remember yeah. that tweet yeah so i said and i mm. i took a break from twitter i got off i didn't want to go back and forth on anybody i only replied to one person that the, the leader co-leader dude who commented originally mm. i said hey thank you so and so um appreciate you for stating your opinion about what i do and i want to thank you for not verbally assaulting me because at the time i don't think he knew this people who follow him and who are in that community were coming at me personally they were sending me stuff directly to me not they weren't commenting on the video they were just sending it straight directly to my twitter handle he, this guy responded and it was weird i don't know if he didn't get the context of what i was saying he was just like um oh i just put it out there if it fits you then it fits you basically saying you know to whom may concern but i'm talking to you and then block me <laughs> so i said hey it's okay. It's okay. He doesn't like that I'm a block me. He, he might have seen it as I'm using him to get things that he doesn't want me to have as a reseller. Right. You know, I got a high enough emotional IQ. I'm not mad at that. It's cool. I took a break from Twitter. And then at the time, I had to go out of town for uh, some business. And that's why I was eventually in that hotel room when I posted that video. And I said, you know what? I'm not going to go back and forth to anybody. I'm not even going to go, like, I'm not even going to reply to anybody. What I'm going to do is make a decision to either continue on this path and do what I do, reselling and learn what this market is and what this thing that I stumbled into is, or I'm gonna stop it, right? So before I posted a video, just quick, I went to a few YouTubers that do reselling. Like, you know, I don't know if you heard of Rizzy Resells. He's, he's been featured on Gary Vee. He's somebody- Is it okay if I do this? It, I'm really asking other people for approval. Like people who in this community are reselling. Is it okay that I, that I resell games is it is it, it like I, I thought with getting that energy that negative twitter energy i thought i was doing something bad and needed to be ashamed of and needed approval from somebody to do Not and then all. a few people said no dude in reselling people don't like resellers period there's a thrift store reseller he specializes in thrift stores and going into st uh, basically going and getting really really inexpensive items and selling them on ebay he said people hate seeing him when he goes to consignment shops and thrift they don't like that because some people go to thrift stores to actually buy and consume and that's it but when a reseller come through they got their apps open they looking for certain items they bulking up because that's their business so that's when i posted that video that i have pinned on my twitter and i said you know what anybody that comes to david drayton's twitter account they're going to get a face they're going to get a voice and they're going to know where i stand on any of this twitter energy so if you come here you go just you, you're wasting your time there and we go that, that video right now probably has almost three thousand views it's and, you got some pretty you got some pretty decent followings from that video too like there were some people yeah. on my end like uh one another gaming youtuber that oj and i are mutually um friends with um gave you a follow off that video too he even commented on that too so my question to you is for let's keep it to gaming and music content creators what profit is there to 
argue about if the Nintendo Switch is better than the PlayStation 4 or if the PlayStation 4 is finally getting um, cross-play. Now we're talking about that. Mm -hmm. What profit is there to have these conversations if you're not putting get no money out of it? Or better yet, I'll even go into something that's a little bit more serious and a little bit more deeper that had a lot of people up in arms, and that was the Jay-Z NFL deal. What mm -hmm. profit is mm -hmm. it for us to talk about these things if we're not coming up with either solutions to the things that we're upset about or because the thing is when i say profit i'm not talking only monetary but i'm also talking about actually resolution profit as well what can profit you know your being and what can profit your pockets so there is really no profit per se what i will say is if you're somebody like you or any any other gaming media uh 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 you know what I'm trying to say. If you like, I say you have a YouTube account and you're a streamer, you get, you know, some sort of monetary gain off of um, commenting, right? You commented on news and things like that. And then some people take it a step further. And which thing I love, and I think some people could tap into, they get their Stephen A. Smith on when it comes to it, right? You look at Stephen A. Smith, the man is so polarizing because he just, he brings out that energy, right? He's gonna speak on what's happening in the NBA, what's happening in the NFL, right? So not only is he getting paid to speak, he's getting an audience, he's building a customer base, he's building up some kind of like brand equity. So if he were to leave whatever network he's under and go over here, and, and I don't know if he has a podcast or not, or he went to a podcast and went to he something. He could. He could do that, right? Yeah. Now, some people are just passionate about stuff for gaming, and they just want to talk about it. That's fine. That's fine. And I've said it many times. If I, I really, I'm not really passionate about it, really, to be honest, any gaming. I don't care what any of them do. I have really have no opinion. That's when I first started uh, <laughs> collecting. I said, man, it would be cool to be a gaming YouTuber. Then I realized I don't care about 99% of what these companies do. I really don't. Like what happens, happens. My mind is so far past consumption, just simple consumption that. I, I just hope they keep producing stuff for me to resell, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Yo, but, um, I feel I, it. I just like, like somebody like you, if you, you have a more peaceful approach, right? But some YouTubers, they're gonna go tip for tat, tip for tat. But that's dope because they actually have a platform they can bring people to the live streams. They can, you know, and you kind of building these little like fan bases who will champion for you. Now, I hate when people are so influenced by a YouTuber that if the YouTuber says this, that's law and anybody See, on the Twitter sphere or the internet that goes against my favorite YouTuber, then I'm just going to go people. Now, mm -hmm. when you have that certain interaction on YouTube and everything, it's like you have to learn for yourself. It's how am I going to make sure that I am still, you know, adding value to something. That's why even with this, this, this conversation we're having. I wanted to I want to add value in what I'm doing. And one of the things that I feel too many people get caught up into is aside from arguing, because some people could use arguing as a platform to still monetary gain, as we just said. But if you're smaller like myself, if you're still growing, you gotta be real with, with yourself. And I think that's the thing that a lot of people don't necessarily get where I'm coming with this. Be yourself online. You have to ask yourself, if nobody was having a big conversation about this, would I look at this topic twice? Would I look at this Jay-Z NFL deal twice if this wasn't trending on Twitter? Would I look at these gaming console wars or what someone said yesterday with the Vita being the better than Nintendo Switch? Would I think twice about this yeah. if this wasn't a trending topic? And nine times out of ten, no, you don't care. So my advice, and I wanted to hear your thing on this too, but my advice to anyone watching, make sure you're doing something that you actually love. Like mm -hmm. focus on that, focus on purpose. Like if something's trending, don't worry about it. The reason why I'm using that NFL deal so much because so many people focus on what's trending. What's mm -hmm. trending is going to die and you're going to be bored afterwards. Yep. And you're going to be chasing something else to be emotional about. And exactly. That stuff is a product. And when I look at like um, blogs on the internet, blogs, especially blogs that put out content catered towards, you know, black people, I look at it two ways. You have people who get emotional, you're the consumer, and then you have the people behind the scenes who's built a business off of reporting things for uh, emotion factor. Exactly. You know, they're just like, oh, why? 
you know and i look at stuff that goes on i'm like, okay i understand the business and i'm thinking like a producer i'm not thinking like a consumer so like you said with the jay-z nfl thing i really didn't have a companion on it i'm not boycotting the nfl i just understand uh, i just see a lot of rich people doing rich people stuff and a lot of broke people with a ton of opinions on what rich people are doing you know like jay-z's rich the nfl's rich kaepernick's rich so i don't know in my mind i'm trying to get rich like i don't <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't have time to be talking. Make a million and, while you're young. <laughs> defending, defending rich people. Like I'm, I'm just looking like Kaepernick ain't got a job, but he settled out of court. He got a pretty nice sum of money, in my opinion. If if I had to guess how much it was, he's he's got endorsements. The man is eating. He's 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 minding his business, right? So now that I have a business, I need to mind that. I find when people don't have a business to mind, they're just out here in the and everybody else their customers so i mean if you want to be a customer for a blog a customer for the nfl a customer for a gaming company to talk about over and over again because a lot of people don't know you're giving these people free, free promotion <laughs> free free you have no platform to even kind of get a fan base for yourself but you're all over twitter tweet 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 tweet, tweet. and people don't really know every time you you text out sony and you tweet ps3 that gets put in an algorithm and they that's all engagement that's all engagement. So like, okay, people are engaged, whether you're for it or against it, that's engagement. That's all good. People don't know this. They just get so caught up in their emotions. I'm like, dude, if you like Sony, buy Sony, enjoy it and live your life. Like, and if your life is wrapped up in video gaming, monetize on it, create a channel, start streaming, get some merch, like create a brand. If you are an emotional person, like some of these people on Twitter, they are characters. I'm like, you know what? Put a face to that character. Or do like Arlo, get a puppet <laughs> if you don't want to be a Do that and build. I can respect that more because a lot of these Twitter people are amazing characters, but you they don't put a face or a name. For me, no, no matter what you think about me, you can go to my Twitter. You can see what I sound like. You can see my face. I use my first and last name, one, because I'm branding David Drake, right? I'm not trying to be some anonymous person just spewing off stuff on the internet. Like, no. I, I'm, I, this is legit for me, right? So I just want people to monetize, monetize, like monetize something, build something. Because if everybody was minding their own business and building and focusing on that, there would be a, would it be as entertaining? I don't know. So it's, it's a it would spot. be, it, it, it would be entertaining. I would say it will be entertaining, but it will be different. it will be more original mm -hmm. if everyone minding their own business. Because the thing is, mm -hmm. people are minding other people's businesses too much to the point where they're trying to emulate other people's businesses. Yep. And then we're getting into different things where people get frustrated because things are not going the way that they planned. And I'm like, that's a very poor business sense. It's like you need to understand if you want to create a brand you need to be very consistent in who you are in your character your brand should consist mm -hmm. of core values you hold for yourself and yes. that's one thing that for me it's as of late i've been and i'm saying this on, on this on this podcast because you, you guys can see i changed the channel into musically i've done instead of asvg beats is because i am breaking away from being viewed as just a gamer it's like mm -hmm. When I've noticed everything I have in my own repertoire that I'm able to do, everything I'm able to talk about, conversations I'm versed in, I said, I'll be doing you guys a disservice by only talking about video games and only playing video games. Hence and forth, this conversation right here, and hence and forth, the other conversations you guys will be seeing on this podcast. But um, I actually want to talk to you about a great, a great, um, a great rapper that passed away earlier this year, Dipsy Hustle. And mm -hmm. this was something that I look back at it because it blew me away. And it's like now that he passed, it's like looking back at what he did with this, it encourages me a lot to kind of make sure that I don't sell myself short and also understand my own individuality and understanding my worth and the products of my worth. So Dipsy Hustle in 2012 released his Crenshaw mixtape. Now, if you guys aren't really educated with music back then, with mixtapes, mixtapes are free. You can go to Dat Piff, or you can go to any other mixtape website and download them for free. No charge, right? Nipsey Hussle had a free, not Nipsey Hussle had a, as I almost said free. Nipsey Hussle had a physical first edition album, well, mixtape. So basically, you don't see that. You don't see 
physical first edition mixtapes. He sold it like an album. He sold a hundred. No, my bad. He sold 1,000 copies for $100 each, mm -hmm. amassing about 1,300% profit margin. That's insane. And and what's even more insane, he did this in under 24 hours. So the I want to ask what did how did that impact your business acumen? I want to ask you that. For me, it said, yo, don't underestimate your products. And don't underestimate the value of the hard work and don't underestimate the value that you've been giving your fan base for all these years. But what are your thoughts on this, man? Man, I took away a lot of that. Like, don't one thing is, don't don't underestimate. Like, he served the people with no money who could only who wanted it for free, and then he served the people with money. You know, I think a lot of times, a lot of people think their entire fan base is broke. Like, that ain't the case. No, nope. you, you may be shocked that some people in your fan base has money. They have money. They're willing to pay a certain ticket. They're willing to pay for a hundred dollar mixtape, especially because. I believe with that mixtape, he bundled it with concert tickets and merch, and he did. his merch, his merch is was so ahead of his time. It had augmented reality in some of his shirts that he does. That you can put your phone up and it plays a music video in the actual yeah of the shirt. You know what I'm saying? Like that that's that was valuable to me, and that's why I wanted it. But I mean, it sold out so fast at the time I couldn't get it. Um, but that's one like one thing I'll say: don't underestimate your fan base. Like. Um, I put out a tweet one time about uh, Patreon price points and I was looking at, cause I don't have a Patreon. I don't, I guess I don't really produce content or anything like that, but I was mm -hmm. looking at people's like Patreons and it's like, some people be like, oh, you know, I just want the $1 thing. I want the 10, the five, the 20. And then I'm looking in different markets and some people have really high Patreon price yeah, points. Some hundred. Like one, one through a hundred or 500. It's kind of like a Indiegogo campaign. If you have a product you have like the early bird one that'll sell out quick because you get the you get the price low and then you have the 25 the 100 the 500 and they, they name it different tiers for different reasons right if they have like a game that's being in production you pay 500 to a thousand in the indiegogo your name gets in the credit your, you they may use your likeness in the game or something like that or whatever and i'm looking at some of these these campaigns some of these things i'm like okay you got patrons at this price point or you got somebody to you know they might limit the one thousand dollar price point on a game to two and one of them sold so somebody with a thousand dollars said that's valuable to me let's go and so one thing i've challenged people and, and this wasn't me like taking a shot at anybody it was just a question for myself in the future like what value are you willing to offer somebody at one dollar a month versus 20 versus 100 that. versus 500 and don't be afraid to put 500 don't be afraid to put value on whatever you do or maybe you need to develop to get to a point to where you can offer 500 dollars a month in value but that you can see really help your business out you know that, that right there to what you said is like i feel like a lot of people don't necessarily i don't think people necessarily want to believe that they're that valuable and it's the it's the self-defeating mindset it's like you you don't believe that you're worth the greatness that is available to you so and a lot of that is a lot of that comes from exterior um influence like people from other people who told you that you're not gonna be of this and you subconsciously believe that you don't believe mm -hmm. that maybe because of past failures um lack of support there are on a plethora of reasons as to why you may not believe that you could do a hundred dollar tier for a patreon because you're thinking to yourself what can i offer and there's that half empty mentality you know you're thinking of your lack rather than your surplus rather than your abundance and mm -hmm. what you could actually that um, provide for me for patreon i said because i am not focusing on it right now this is a one dollar price but i told people i said when i start moving other things you guys in the one dollar you guys gonna be grafted in and grandfathered in forever at one dollar per month mm -hmm. but everybody else when i'm ready is going to be five and up that's my mindset on how to do patreon that's my mindset even how to do youtube members it's like you graft people in and you let them retain the price that they want to pay 
and then you make a next available tier for everybody else to move in on. And that's something that I feel as though you do over time. And if you're really studying yourself, which is something that is again, underrated and underused, people don't study themselves. Mm -hmm. You study yourself for your habits and your brand enough, you'll see the things that you can value, you could offer. Cause you're gonna start seeing what people don't like about your stuff, what people do like. And if you focus on what people do like and amplify that, then that's when you can put easily put a twenty dollar tier and you'll have about five people sign up easily or twenty people sign up easily and there's like there's your four hundred dollars right there a month easily and four hundred four hundred dollars extra compared to everything else you're doing it adds up <laughs> oh yeah it adds up but I, i'll just challenge people okay what can, okay you got 20. what what can you create from your mind to 440 what's what's 40 when you when a person already has access to your time through playing games with you talking to you on the discord and being in your discord server what yeah. else can come from your brand as you you could do so much you can make exclusive content for them discord now has exclusive streams so you could say exclusive discord streams you could say easy stuff like um um, behind the scenes content you could do special vlogs that's only for the patreons who know of the upcoming plans that's what's going to happen for the channel you could show uh um early trailers like you get the, they get the early premiere of some of the some of the videos that are going to come out especially bigger videos it's like you know because you are a 40 dollar mm -hmm. patron you get to see this first before everybody else and that's something that i personally i personally feel that a lot of people don't necessarily want to utilize some have a lot have but i've noticed that some people want to just keep things i think the best way i could put it is keep what's easier than what's more profitable and i actually want to um give the floor to you for my final question of the night and it's quarter four it's 2019 it's almost at the end of the year already and we could sit here and be like, yo, this year went by fast. Or we could say, yo, it's time to get some work done. So for people who struggle with time management, and I'll be transparent and say, I need work with time management myself. But people who struggle with time management and just for people who want to just, you know, just plan for better goals and to retain focus, like focus that's another thing i think a lot of us mess up on is focus on goals what is your advice to do that man that's a good question because me through this journey i have so much plans for uh, david drayton the brand um just to share some of my goals like uh navigating through this culture that i have a foot in the gaming culture then i got a foot in the reselling culture i got a foot in eventually i want to get into the real estate investing culture so that's mm -hmm. the three dimensions of my twitter as far as who i follow it's those three dimensions so i'm seeing people who like the energy that i put out people who's like taking note when i put a tweet out you know and saying hey this is gonna flip you might want to get you one and then i keep people updated on that flip and show them hey it, I made my money back and made some more in a week. What's up? Who took who took action when they saw that? I'm noticing that. I'm noticing the temperament of certain people on the internet. When I see the negative energy of people who um, are just really negative, they're coming. I have empathy for them because I know they're coming from a place mm. of maybe discomfort. You know, I've been on different chats and I've seen people who say their displeasure with their life and they've come to the gaming side of, of YouTube or Twitter to vent about it. And yeah. it's typically, you know, one area is men game and not to say gamers are any stereotype, but you know, some dudes have a hard time dealing with women. Right. And that's something that I don't have a hard time with, you know, and some dudes are like, well, you're tall and you, you, you know, you look a certain way, you have money. I'm like, well, when you leave high school and college and you go in the real world, being tall is not going to get you a wife. You know yeah, what I'm saying? It's, it's like those, those one little points, it, maybe a woman will give you a chance. Maybe she might approach you. But you have to offer something more as a man for her to stick around for any type of relationship. So I'm noticing, OK, there's a need for that. There's a lot of people in this community who need help with that, but they don't necessarily I'm, I'm assuming they don't go to other content creators on YouTube to get help with that. They lean heavily on their YouTube influencers to help them with that. And most you I don't see many YouTube gamers helping their gaming fan base with with men helping with those areas. And some people I, I, oh, they do some rebranding to kind of help. But that's an arm. So I'm like, okay, that's an arm. 
you know, and I just got a personal trainer. So I'm getting to the fitness arm of my thing. That's like, that's one of the quickest ways that I see that anybody can elevate their brand, elevate their mind, elevate their body is by nutrition, mental health and physical health. And they all go hand in hand. So if you they take do. that into control, you're going to attract so many people because it, it's such an attainable goal and so many people need it and so many people want it. So if you take that arm to your brand too, you just raise your value. You know, you raise another thing that you can give people outside of gaming and you know, say you're a gamer. People like you for that. You add fitness, you add like just kind of helping being being something that people can aspire to be just by your actions. You know, that's why I love Nipsey so much, because the man built a, like he built this wheel of income streams. He built it out to where he's going to get paid from every angle, his music, his distribution, his clothing store. He has like his tech company, his real estate. <laughs> you know, it's it all works for him. It all worked. It all funnels through. So. So, yeah, I probably I love gaming. I told you I started selling my collection off in May of this year. I probably only game maybe once a week. Sometimes I don't game for weeks, like between my day job and navigating through that world because I'm still in that world. So I still have to, you know, dedicate time, part of my time to that. Then I still got to go with the reselling stuff. I still got to source stuff. I still got to, you know, the list stuff. I still got to be in that that space. And then on the outside of that, I still have to try to see, okay, when can I fit in working out? When can I fit in uh, doing this and meeting over with this and then thinking in the future? Um, you know, I, like market, like one thing I've noticed with YouTubers and maybe some of you guys don't know this, but social media is such an amazing tool. And I'm noticing this that a lot of dope YouTubers only are on Twitter and YouTube. And I can understand why that's a, that's kind of like a, um, they go hand in hand, but I'm like, why aren't these people on Instagram? There's so many millions of people on Instagram, Instagram, you know, or Snapchat or TikTok. Like that's a wheel for your brand to like get different people. Cause there's different people on Instagram and there's different people on TikTok and there's different people on Twitter that you can reach out to. It's a whole different marketplace, you know? So like, there'll be like one dude, I, I forgot his name, but he'll be playing the piano. And I guess with, I'm not a pr producer, yeah. but he'll be playing a beat and he'll have it on loop. Then he'll go to the guitar and play that or he'll go here and play that. And he'll bring it all together. So you can actually see the theatrics of that happen. It's like, whoa, this is amazing. You can kind of follow, follow his brand and when he's posting it. So some YouTubers, man, if you're on Instagram, maybe you could start documenting on there. Maybe, I mean, it doesn't have to be something big, but it could oh. definitely grow your audience. You have people who are only follow you on Instagram who's not going to come to Twitter. Or some people will follow you on YouTube, but they're not going to come to Twitter. They're not going to go to Instagram. They're not going to go to Snapchat. But it takes a lot of time. And so time management in a nutshell is just prioritize on, for me, I prioritize on one thing at a time. And I spend so much time on that one thing and then I move on. And then I spend so much time on that thing and I move on, you know, like myself, like from, you know, the organization that I work for, I have two interviews with them to move around in my company and uh, tomorrow. So for me, good luck. yeah, for me doing this helped me mentally not focus on that. I'm still working out my, I'm being interviewed right now. This kind of helped me like, yo, this is, this is really cool. So I can kind of take a break from that and focus on and think about something else and and now i feel like tomorrow i'm gonna nail the interview because you, you know, had I'm this like this, this about it this <laughs> i asked you some hard, harder questions some stuff that you had to think about a little bit so oh yeah but um this was this was dope um uh, i'm gonna we're gonna start closing out here because we are hitting our, our mark i they really want to thank you for coming on the show man this is um Definitely gonna have to have, any, have you on on another episode with with progress to see where your your, your evolution, man. Because it's great, it's great to see. It's inspiring, and it it to what you were saying about using um other platforms. It's like I use my Twitter to be my place where I self help you. I help you motivate yourself mm -hmm. to, and I look. I try to go between the morning times and lunch time. For you to either in the mornings, you're just waking up, you're just getting to work, or lunchtime, mm -hmm. where you feel like, yo, my day is just all messed up right now. I really want to go home right now. And then 12 o'clock Eastern Standard Time or whatever time you, you see your lunch, it's like, you know what? Let me try this again today. Like, it's funny you mentioned about um, mental health and physical health go hand in hand, because I'm like, yo, self-care is taking care of all sides of yourself. You got to take care of yourself. It's like if you neglect even one side, that's where unhappiness comes. Oh, yeah. And I tell people that. I tell people that all the time. So I, myself, you know, would like to thank you. Uh, make sure you guys are following Pay D Dre. That's P A Y D D 
R A Y. I got it right this time. <laughs> and um, we're gonna go ahead and wrap it up. Do you have any um last thing? Any last things you want to share for any, anyone, man? Yes. Uh, one. Any advice I can give somebody? Because like as I'm speaking, as I'm, I'm giving you guys real life for me. This is. Thank you, Avanon, for having me on. Because when you approached me to do this, I was already on board with it. Because I'm like, Bad. one thing I'm about is getting out of your comfort zone. I've never done this before. So guys, if you, I've never been on a podcast before, right? Never done this. So when he approached me about it, I was like, let's go. Didn't think about it. I'm not gonna allow any doubt or, oh, what is, no, no, I'm, you know, I'm gonna do this. So take action, seize opportunity, and you don't have to have all the answers or all the plan. You don't have everything immaculately planned out. Just go and learn. From May 1st to now, I've learned so much and it changes every month, every month. Things change for me, goals change. I develop in so many different ways. You get stronger, you get more confident. Like back in April, I was, I mean, not April, back in early June, when I, when people were coming at me on social media, that was a learning point for me. That was a point where I was like, okay, are you gonna make it in here, make it in what you're doing? Or are you gonna stop, break, and allow the opinions of other people to stop? Am I gonna allow them to stop me to do it? And I said, no, no, I'm not gonna allow them to stop me. I'm gonna keep going forward and look where it got me. He got me on. You got you. you, know, you got it. Got fart. <laughs> Yo, everyone in the comments, let say how this man has done on his first podcast. You, you was a natural dude. I appreciate super, it. Appreciate supernatural. It. But um, we're gonna do this the same way we do this every single video because we can't talk about branding. And I don't practice branding myself. So, if you like this video, make sure you hit that dislike button. Make sure you hit that subscribe button. And most of all, most of all, you, yes you, make sure you share this with a friend. This is Avedon and D Drayton, and we are out. Peace.